Good morning. morning. Come on, let's try it again. Good morning. morning. Go ahead and grab your note sheets if you would. Glad you're here. Um, If you did not receive an outline of today's message, just lift your hands up in the air. We'll make sure you have something to follow along with because we are, come on, we are a note taking church. Now make sure your, your neighbor next to you has a pen. Go ahead and make sure right now that they have something they're following along with. Come on, hold them accountable. Come on, we're a note-taking church. How you doing with that? A lot of you do it on our app. Those online doing it on our app, thanks for tuning in. We are beginning a new series. Everyone say new series. New series today that's going to lead right up to one of my most favorite services of the entire year. That's our candlelight services. Uh, But we're starting a new series called Carols. What they teach us. And just way of beginning, uh, we're going to look at some different carols. This is the top 10 most streamed Christmas songs on Spotify of all time, even globally. Can you guess maybe what one or two of them are? Here's number one of all time streamed Christmas carols. All I want for Christmas is you. You guessed it. Number two, I'm going to go through these quickly. Number two, Last Christmas. Number three, Santa Tell Me. I'm not even, I don't think I've heard that one. Number four, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Um, Number five, rocking around the Christmas tree. Number six, most streamed Christmas songs, Jingle Bell Rock. Number seven, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Come on, Mike, are you singing with me? (laughs) No, we better stop right there. Uh, Number eight, Justin Bieber's Mistletoe. Number nine, Snowman. And number 10, Do They Know It's Christmas? Now, What did you notice about those top 10 most streamed Christmas songs of all time globally? Anything? (laughs) Not one of those songs. Now, I want you to think we're a thanking church. By the way, if you're brand new, glad you're here. Um, Let's just think now just for the next 20, 25 minutes. I want you to gauge your mind. You got your note sheet there. Um, What did you notice? Not one of those songs is themed around what we celebrate in in, in Christmas, God's climatic entrance, his intervention in human history in the gift of his son. It would almost be like if you went to a steak dinner and, and ordered a a5 wagyu steak and and uh, just chow down and they put a little uh, uh, garnish, little parsley on top of the steak. And after it was all over, they said, "What well, was your favorite part?" You said, "Man, I just love the parsley. Just ate up the parsley." Like seriously? And we have the whole world saying this is our favorite. Um, carols, carols. You say, Pastor Charlie, hold on. Are you uh, humbugging here? Are you against all these? No, I'm not against those songs. I just want us to think. Here's the question in your notes. What in the world is the big deal? I want to suggest to you the big deal goes along the lines of what um, college professor and uh, Boston professor Kilpatrick said in his book, Why Johnny, this is his book title, Why Johnny Can't Tell Right from Wrong. Can we say that book title together? Why Johnny Can't Tell Right from Wrong. Now, if his his words are up there, you can read them with me. He says, we tend to, this, this is the big deal. This is why it's a big deal. We tend to learn something more easily and indebitably if it's set to a rhyme or a song. Do you agree? You don't just have to gobble it down. Just think, engage your mind Um, to a song or rhyme. Advertisers know this and use it so effectively that sometimes we have difficulty getting their jingles out of our heads. One eight seven seven cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. 
donate your car today. <laughs> Advertisers, they know this. Now just think about that just for a moment. They know that. They're angling at something, trying to get something from us. But, professor says, but there are more, come on, there are more what? Positive educational uses. Most of us learned, come on, learned the alphabet this way, and some of us even learned our history as well. Uh, in your notes, first fill in the blank, get Jack, Pastor Charlie's moving, we're getting through this quick. Uh, let's not underestimate as a church the power and the influence of music. That's why the church has always been a singing family. We come in here and we sing. Why? Because we're learning about God through our singing. Do not underestimate teaching our children Christian songs. Um, and by the way, just as a side note, in, I'm prophesying right now, speaking into existence. In 2024, our worship team from this church is going to produce two original worship songs that you can download on iTunes and worship God in your car. Come on, where's Amante? Did you hear me? Put them on this. Yes! And Noel. We're going to do it in, in, uh, in 20. Don't, let's not underestimate the power of music to teach us, to teach us truth. So question your notes. What are Christmas carols? Let's just break this down. What are Christmas carols? We're on the same page. Songs. Christmas carols are songs that teach and remind us about what God has accomplished through his son, Jesus. Teach and remind us about what this season is truly about. God's intervention in history. They are songs that teach us and remind us that God so what loved the world, that he, he, did, he did something. He gave his only beloved son that whoever puts their trust and confidence in him will not perish, not have a life that perishes, but have a life that what? That leads to eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to what? To condemn the world, but that the world through him might be, come on, might be, might be saved. So, where are we going, Pastor Charlie? Over the next three Sundays, leading up to our Christmas Eve service, we're going to be looking at three carols uh, together. So, let's jump in. Our first carol, written by Charles Wesley, is over, just over 300, come on, 300 years old. Can you imagine writing a song that people are still singing 300 years uh, from now? Who were Who's Charles Wesley? Charles' brother, maybe you've heard of John Wesley, two brothers. John and Charles Wesley gave birth 300 in the 1730s to the Methodist movement, uh, a revival that really uh, shook the church. And we have Methodist churches here today, but they find their origin in the brothers John and Charles Wesley. John was a fiery uh, preacher, uh, an astounding preacher, hold audiences' attention. Uh, a theologian, Charles was the songwriter. He, he, he wrote songs about God. In fact, he wrote over, get ready for this, he wrote over 6,000 songs. Now, folks, if you write over 6,000 songs, uh, you're probably going to have one or two that are successful, okay? Are you here? I just dropped that in there for, for somebody. Just don't give up. <laughs> just, just keep writing. Keep Keep believing. Um, 6,000 songs. Now, remember John. John was the preacher, theologian. But th listen to what John said about Charles's songbook, his hymnal. This is what he said. He said, Charles's songbook, his hymnal, was the best theological book in existence. Now, think about that. How, how could you say that? Uh, a theological book, by the way, what's theology? Theology is the science. Say Science. It's a science. It's the study of God, right thinking about God. And, and it wasn't in some book, but according to John, if we took him seriously, he was very intelligent. He said, go to this song book and learn these songs, and you'll learn accurate and solid thinking about God. Are you here? Lord, I pray that we have some young people who rise up and their songwriters for God to teach the next generation accurate thinking 
about God. Are you here? Which leads me to this prayer inside, inside your notes there. And I want to the entire church. Can we, can we say this, this prayer together? Lord, may the church continue to produce beautiful songs that are theologically sound so everyday people can accurately learn about you. Come on, in Jesus' name, all of us said, come on, say everyday people. That's me. I mean, put the cookies on the bottom shelf so I can, I, I can reach them. I, I might not understand all the big languages, but it would be put it in a song and I can sing it. I, I can remember and begin to think correctly about God. Okay, uh, enough intro. Let's dive into today's first carol. By the way, this first carol, it's tough to read because you just want to sing it. Uh, but I want us to think about, think about the words. By the way, inside this first stanza, it, it, it's touched several, several keys to, experience, to experiencing life to its fullest, the, the, the very life of God. Okay, let's, let's, let's read this together. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth. And mercy mild, God. And sinners, what? Now think about that. What's this season all about? God. The possibility that God and sinners could be what? Now, by the way, let's just stop here. Don't get anxious. We're going we're gonna to keep reading. I just, I'm just so excited. What, what does it mean to reconcile? How do you reconcile? Come on, how is a relationship reconciled? How is a marriage reconciled? How is a friendship reconciled? Well, usually, now come on, think with me. Usually when someone has done something awful or wrong or hurt somebody, they come back and say what? I'm sorry, will you forgive me? Um, And it's not just that, but it, it begins there. I'm sorry, will you forgive me? And by the way, watch my behavior. I'm going to change. And so reconciliation has a chance to take root. Here's the amazing thing about God is, is that um, uh, uh, God wasn't, um, he didn't hurt anybody. He wasn't at fault. And yet he pursued reconciliation with us. In that while we were sinners and, and angry with God and hurt at God and all the stuff with God, yet he was still for us. God, so much love. Oh, if we can understand the height and the depth and the length and the width of the love of God. That passes, Scripture says, understanding. What are we remembering this Christmas season? We're not just remembering a piece of parsley. We're remembering the good thing that God has done for us that I can be reconciled with, oh goodness, with the Lord. God and sinners, let's go back to it. God and sinners reconciled. That reconciliation produces an emotion. (laughs) Come on, what is it? Joy. Joyful. All ye nations. What? Rise. Join the triumph of this guy. With angelic host, what? Proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark, the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. How to experience. Did you see that tucked right in there? In fact, this phrase over and over, hark the herald angels sing, hark the herald angels sing. We see in there a key to experiencing all the life and the help of God. Another way you could title this message is, um, what does hark mean and who is herald? Okay, so let's begin. Hark, (laughs) what in the world? You doing okay? Come on, smile. What in the world does hark mean? We don't use that word anymore. Uh, but hark means, um, listen up. Hey, everybody, stop what you're doing and pay attention. Uh, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Hark. We don't say hark anymore. We say, hey, hey, everybody gather together and listen up. So the first, the first way that we experience the full strength and the help of God in our lives is, is this. It's just simple, honest and genuine listening, listening to the right things. Oh, goodness. Someone even needs to start listening to right Christmas songs or at least put a mix of some of the right Christmas songs in with the other songs. (laughs) 
listening, undivided attention. Now, um, I didn't bring, everyone grab your phone and just wave it at me. I, I should have brought my phone up here. Uh, every study, right now, it's too early to tell. Okay, I got it. I got you. I got you. Uh, it's too early to tell. I just, but um, we do not yet know the, the impact that these little devices are having on uh, the human brain. But we do know this. Here, here, here's what we do know is, is the human brain is being rewritten. We, we are biological creatures and we, we adjust and are, uh, over time and, and, and we change. And this little device uh, uh, that we have is rewiring um, the way that we think. I don't have all the studies in, but we know that. Um, our attention, our attention. Look in your notes. What in the world does attention mean? Um, it's our ability to, to, come on, to concentrate, concentrate. Wow. Human attention, we're talking about our ability to concentrate and to think deeply, to think thoroughly. Come on, say the word thoroughly. To think thoroughly about a given subject without what? Without being distracted. Distracted. Um, now, I don't believe this study, but some would say that the human attention is now at about eight seconds. Um, come on, just, just flick the thumb. Flick the thumb to the next thing. <laughs> flick the thumb to the next thing. Uh, why? Because... Um, because we're losing our ability to think clearly, thoroughly, deeply. By the way, I just want to congratulate you for being in church. This, Lord, I pray that this will always be the case. This, this may be one of the last places on planet Earth you just stop and think. Hopefully you're thinking, you're engaging your mind right now. Where am I going What's the condition of my relationships and my family and my marriage and my think about my think about our our lives. Um, the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadelli, said this: the true scarce commodity of the near future will be human what? Human attention. Now, folks, if this is true. Now, by the way, we, we can't stop, we can't, you know, we're not going to turn off all the phones in the world. No, that's not going to happen. Um, but it's just like the enemy to take something that can be used for good and he turns it. Um, the, the enemy would love to get people to stop concentrating and to lose their ability to really correctly and accurately think through. Uh, am I heading in a, in a, in a healthy direction? Here, here's the big problem. The, if this is true, this is the problem. Our prosperity, our success, our progress hinges on our ability to honestly, genuinely, deeply, thoroughly, what? To, to listen. Any parent knows this. Uh, to keep someone safe to keep someone protected, our, our futures. That's why the scripture over and over says, hear the word of the Lord. Listen, thus says the Lord. I want to look at one example here in Isaiah. Look what Isaiah the prophet said, Isaiah 55, and starting in verse 1. He says, come, now, by the way, the scripture's up there for those who are new, we're going to read it together. Come. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come. Now, wait a second, Isaiah. I'm already struggling because you're thinking people. How can you buy when you don't have any money? Now, by the way, the waters aren't waters. You've got to stop thinking just literally. The waters are, are, are living my life well, uh, achieving, being fruitful. Um, experiencing the, the help of God in my life. Come, Isaiah says, and buy. Buy without money. Uh, now, how do you buy? It's, it's not money. You buy 
You ready? Buying is, is listening. How much does it cost to listen? Hold on, Pastor. You, you, you're tricking me here. No, I'm, I'm serious. He said, come and buy. How much does it cost for us just to honestly and genuinely listen to the Lord? Not just hear another message. We can hear, we can hear, we can hear. It's not meaning. It's just bouncing off our hearts, bouncing off our heads, and we go out the door. No, no, no. To genuinely down in my heart and soul to really think, God, you are for me. And you're not against me. God and sinners, you loved us so much that you reconciled us. Oh, joy to the world. Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering that. Let's, let's go back to scripture there. Come by, let's listen to the prophet of old. Come by and eat. Come, now look at the types of food he talks about. Come by what? Wine and milk without what? Without money and without... Now that, that wine and milk, that is in, in Isaiah's time, this is the best there is. The best of the best. Listen to me. The life that... Uh, it's, it's over the top living. Come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why do you, come on, ask this question with Isaiah that he asked. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and you labor for that which does not satisfy? Just work and toil. What's the answer? What's his next words? Listen diligently to me. Come on, let's say it again. Listen. How? Listen. Concentrate. Pay attention. Turn. I'm so glad you're at church. Church is us turning down the volume on everything else and turning up the volume on the right things. Uh, listen to me. And eat. Look what he says. Eat. What? What is good and delight yourself in, in rich food. By the way, let me just stop here. Did, did you catch that? Listening to the right word is compared with eating good food. Nutrient-packed, soul-satisfying food. Listening to the right things. How many of us, are, because we're listening to the wrong things, we have a diet of like Takis and, and, and like Cheez-Its and like uh, uh, whatever it is, Pop-Tarts. And on and on and on. That's our, that's our diet for our soul, and it will never satisfy. And he says, he says, listen to the words of God. It's like nutrient-packed food. It'll make you robust and strong in your soul. Incline your ear. Look at verse 3. Incline your ear and come to me. Here, that's your soul. That you may prosper. That you may, oh, God. Lord, help us to, help us to tune in to the right things. We fast forward. We fast forward probably about to 600 years. Jesus walked on a scene. And he's in the marketplace. And he says, uh, he raised his voice. L listen up, everybody. You know what he was saying? Hark. That's what the carol teaches us. Hark. I know you're busy going here and there and, and, and doing work and stuff. Listen up. Remember, God's for you. He loves you. Set a son for you. So Jesus is standing there. He says, hey, everybody, listen up. Listen up. I want to tell you a story. A farmer went out to sow some seed. And he threw some seed on the ground. And some of the seed fell on, the, on a path. People walked and the birds came down and ate the seed. And some of the seed that he threw fell on some rocky soil. Didn't have very much death. And some of the seed he fell, fell on some, some soil that had a bunch of weeds. And the weeds choked out the, the seed. But some of the soil that he threw fell on good soil. And that seed went down, and it began to grow, and it began to be productive, fruitful, and effective. Some of those plants produced 30, some produced 60, some even produced, listen to me, a hundredfold. And then Jesus says, he who has ears to hear, come on, listen to me. Well, Lord, what are you talking about? He's talking about how we listen to 
the words of the Lord determines how fruitful we will be in our lives. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The seed, Jesus said, is the teaching and the word of God. It's being thrown out there. It's being thrown right now. And I wonder what kind of soil it's hitting. Distracted soil? Pastor, life beat me up, and I'm... I gotta be honest, my heart's hard. That seat. But if you can somehow, and honestly, it's a gift from God, if somehow by the power of the Holy Spirit you can say, Lord, help me to hear. Help me to truly hear your good words from me. I want to receive it. It can produce fruitfulness in our lives. Let me just let me give you a side thought here. In any relationship, um, well, this is just good marital stuff right here. But any relationship, friendship, the key to honest listening, we could do a whole teaching on how to genuinely listen. By the way, taking notes, uh uh-oh, I'm stepping on toes right now. Leaning in. Lord, I'm, I'm diligently. It's not half-baked for me. I'm all in, leaning in. Holy Spirit, speak to me. I'm, uh, back to what I was saying. The, the, one of the keys to, to listening is, um, is your eye contact. By the way, in, in your marriage, when's the last time you just put down the phone and looked your spouse deep in the eyes and you guys just talked? And you listen to one another. Pastor Charlie, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a healthy relationship. And and the Lord wants to have a, oh goodness, a relationship with us. And so I just want to stop here and ask you, what are you listening to this season? That's, That's really it. What do you need to turn down the volume on? Another way of listening is is what you're what you're focused on and looking at. What are you what are you looking at? Just just consuming you. Um, oh goodness! Yesterday, we, me and the boys we we were chopping firewood and we had the uh, the log splitter going and the, the chainsaw all out and and uh, uh, I'm cutting logs and bringing over the logs and Jude and Oakley are or running the the log splitter. And I, I look over from a distance, and I can see them, and uh, they're not getting along. <laughs> Actually, they're, I can tell they're arguing with one another. And, and Jude's saying something, and Oakley's over there saying something back. And so I'm about 10 feet away from them. And uh, Jude! Jude! Who? Oh, Jude! Jude! Jude, Jude! Not, never turn his head, looking at Oakley, doing his thing, and I could feel my, the temperature going up. Jude, and so I just started getting closer. Jude, Jude, and the closer I got, the louder I got. Jude! To, I'm two feet away from him. Now I'm at the top of my lungs. Now I know he has to hear me. Now it's just willful not hearing. And now I'm like this, goes, jam! <laughs> Neighbors, I'm sure, hearing, going, that guy's lost his mind. He's got a chainsaw with his boys. Look at him. <laughs> Somebody better call the police. Anyway, Jude goes, oh, Dad, I, I couldn't hear you because of the, the log splitter. I said, you have to hear my voice <laughs> over everything else when I call your name. Oh, I, I, but I couldn't hear you. You know, I feel like some of us, just the, the hum. And you're all around it. And the whole time, the Lord's saying, hey, Frank, Frank, hey, Sarah, Jan. Jan, Jan, 
And even when you turn on the, the radio, you hear, Hark! Hark! The herald! The angels are singing. Listen diligently to me. There's a better way. I want you to eat something that's going to... I want you to lean in. Experience that satisfaction in your soul. And so we just pause right now. Lord, help us to really hear. Even right now, Lord, to, to listen to you. Lord, I thank you that it's never your intent, Lord, when you speak to harm or, Lord, to even set back or to hurt. Lord, but you, you love to see your children lifted up, shackles taken off, forgiven, walking in freedom, Lord, and healed. Lord, help us to hear that message afresh and new this season. Come on in Jesus' name. All of us said, Amen. Amen. Hark, who in the world is Harold? The second key is, and it's just like God, it's not just being able to listen to good news, good promises, but God requires us to also be sharers of that good news. Can you imagine if I had good news about something? Yeah. Bed, bath, and beyond is back. And they've got 50% discount cards. And you're freaking out. And you're just like, oh, I gotta, can't wait to get to work. Tell somebody the good news. They're back. Tell them they're back. They're back. God said, uh, Look, let's look at the stanza again. I want us to, to actually read the words. A herald is someone who proclaims, announces, makes something known. Uh, look at the words of the stanza. It says, join the, join the triumph of the skies. What's the next line? With angelic. We're joining the angels in doing what? We're proclaiming. We're, we're heralding. What? Everything's changed. Everything has changed. We're not waiting in the future when he came and was born and lived this life and died and rose again. The game's over. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Everything has changed. So to experience, secondly, to experience the life and the help of God, we, we, we must speak up. Someone, someone has to speak up to announce or to proclaim. We don't just hear good news, but we, we pass that good news on. Listen to this definition of a herald. What's a herald? An official messenger, especially one representing a king as an ambassador during wartime. Um, we're all in here ambassadors. And some people think that there's still a war going on between God and them. And we can just simply be a herald. Yeah. Hey, there's, there's no war. In fact, there's just peace. So much peace that he just wants to share it with you where you are and what you're, maybe what you're going through Look at the things that this, this carol says that Jesus is. By the way, this is just teaching what Scripture teaches. It says, hail, hail the head-born prince of what? Peace. peace. Do you need peace? That word peace is just wholeness. Don't think just the, the absence of strife. No, it's in the presence of strife or whatever. I'm good. I'm so good. I'm whole and complete. 
hail. What's that word hail? Respect, honor. You know, we can sing hail to the commanders. Hail, victor. Come on, all my Dallas Cowboy fans. Come on, sing it with me. Braves on. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But we're, 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 we're giving honor and respect. How about hail, heaven, heaven's born, prince of peace. Hail, the son of what? Here's the crazy thing about righteousness is Jesus is the gift of righteousness to us. He doesn't keep it to himself, but all those who've come to him, he takes our sin and our brokenness and he gives us his wholeness, his righteousness. And we're clean without guilt before God. Hail the son of righteous light in life to all he brings. Light, clarity, life. Riz with what? He's risen with healing. Lord, you're my healer. Mild he lay his glory by. Born that man, people, no more. Got eternal life. It's done. In Christ, I have eternal life. Born to raise. Lord, you take people to new heights and new levels. They could not attain to by themselves. You raise people up. Born to give them what? Born. Thank you for new birth. Hark. The proclaiming angels. They're sending out an official message to the world. The Prince of Peace. The healer. The gift of righteousness has come. Now, I want to ask you a question here in closing. How are you doing as a herald? Uh, what are you posting on Facebook? Uh, what are you saying? <laughs> well, what does this have to do with the experience in life? It has everything to do with it because if we have received good news and yet we, we, we don't share it, then, then the Lord is... Um, is concerned with, with what we're doing. Um, I, I um, heard a story. I was just, just out in the lobby, and a couple came up to me, and, and who are you? How you doing? Never seen them before. Good to see you. How'd you come to church? Oh, um, the person who cuts my hair said, uh, why don't you come to my church? And literally, she said this. She said, you know what? in a day and age where people were so afraid about offending or saying anything. I was looking for a church. And I was so glad somebody invited me. And the guy standing behind her not saying anything, which husbands usually do, don't say anything, just stand there <laughs> smiling. Happy to be here, but not going to say anything. And their son was behind her. She said, yeah, it's been so good. It's so good to have a church family. Been here since January, and, 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 and my husband and my son, are, they're getting baptized on the next baptism. We're just, just smiling. And, what? Yes, yes. What's happening there? That hairdresser is helping what? With the angelic host, we're proclaiming. There's good news something better. I'm so glad that we do not have to do this alone, but we do it. <laughs> we do it together. Look at this in closing, this last verse, 2 Corinthians 5 and, and 20 says, we, come on, say we. That's an important we. We. Come on, turn to somebody and say, say that's you. Tell somebody right now, say that's you. That's you. Say that's me. Come on, tell somebody, that's us. That's us. We're, we're doing this together. Come on, say the word together. together. If someone just got that principle and stopped doing alone yeah. in your own thing, we could, really do, we could really do something special. People work together usually do more. Are you here? We are ambassadors for Christ. God 
is making his appeal how? Monday when I go to work. When I get on that plane, when I go to the office, or when I log in, God's making an appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ. In other words, we beg you. Be what? You don't have to be at odds with, you don't have to be alienated or you don't have to be far from God. For our, and this is, this one sentence summarizes the good news. Just in a different way. Look what it says. For our sake, he made Jesus, the him there is Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin. That's what he was doing on the cross. Hearing our sin. Look, so that in him we might become what? There's that transfer. Lord, I give you my brokenness and my sin and you give me wholeness and right standing before God. My conscience is clean because you paid it all for me. Look at 6.1. Work, because of all that, look what the scripture says. Working together with him. That right there is one of the best definitions of the church I know of. Come on, let's say it together. Working together with, instead of him, that, that stands for God. Let's say it together. Working together with God. That's us. That's us. How are we going to make our appeal? How, how are we going to herald and proclaim how are we going to work together? You know, this is, this is going to be a better setup. This is, this is what the big give is all about. All of us. For those who are new with us, those who have been here a long time, you know what this is. This is our end of the year closing offering that we pray about and we bring to the Lord. Um, we've been handing these out. I don't know if anybody read them, but um, been handing these out every single week. I just want to just remind us, last year, we had, a, we had a fabulous big give, but what did we do? What, what were we? Working together, giving together, serving together, what were we able to do? Uh, well, we sent our very first full-time missionary in the Congo in one of the most dangerous places in the world to grow up as a female. We have ministry happening right there. Uh, we made much needed renovations and improvements to our children's and teen areas. By the way, that's just the beginning. Much more to do there. But we started. We outfitted our special needs room. This is all in here, by the way. It's printed. <laughs> outfitted our special needs room with all kind of essential toys and equipment. Um, we allocated... Uh, money over here for our expansion to help us uh, make more room uh, for teenagers. Well, I want to share with you quickly what we would like to do with this year. Come on, everybody say this year. This year's big give. Quickly, I'm going to go through it real quick. This is what we would like to do is make, for number one, make more room for kids by closing the gap on our expansion cost. This is what I would like to do this year. We would like to do, everyone point this way. Come on, point that way. Say, Pastor Charlie. Some of you just refusing to participate right now. It's going to be all right. Come on, say, Pastor Charlie. Let's finish this expansion in Jesus' name. So here's, here's our goal is uh, this is the last time I want to be uh, talking about money for that expansion. We're going to put that project in the rearview mirror and move on to the next thing the Lord has for us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Um, so right now, we're just slammed. And we're doing something that we hate to do, and that's turning families away. And we just want to make more room, more room for others. Continue, secondly, we want to continue to renovate and improve our Sea Kids rooms. They're not near where we want them to be. Uh, Pastor Mike, wherever you are. We have a, by the way, we have a, we have a children's, um, designer, I don't even know what you call them, expert. Um, 
think, um, oh goodness, I can even, Disney, but no, I want to use Disney. I want to use something else. Anyway, coolest design person coming in in a week to look at our kids' spaces. And I'm telling you, look at me, look at me, my, my children's workers better be going crazy. We're going to take that whole children's ministry and just take it up a whole notch in Jesus' name. Um, Oh, I know what I was thinking of. I was thinking of of Nickelodeon, you know, like there's rooms for kids and stuff. You're like, wow, 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 wow. Um, That's what's going to happen. We believe what's going to be happening when you walk in there after this big gift. I'm telling you. What, we, what we'd like to do. Uh, we'd like to reach more kids through our rallies. Folks, I was challenged by this. You know we have a goal to, to shine light right in the middle of like 45,000 middle and high school students. Everyone's talking about how bad, 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 bad. Well, let's turn a light on. Let's do something good. You know the last, you know what we have budgeted right now for our rallies? We had about 230 kids here. We want this room to have, we want four or 500 teenagers to be in here we spent 5000 that's all we had, $5,000 for that party. Now, if we're honest, some of us will go on a work party with 30 people and spend $5,000 like that. And we're trying to feed and throw a, a blowout. Uh, region shaking. Everyone has to notice, oh my goodness, what are they doing? Well, how's that going to happen? What's going to happen to the big give? We're going, to, we're going to give and we're going to work together. See what we can do together. Uh, continue our partnerships. We want to continue our partnerships of our local and global partners. Loudoun Abused Women's Shelter, Loudoun Hunger Relief, Down Syndrome Association, our Title I schools. Oh, goodness, Congo, the Tanzania, Hope Co., Peru, Cuba, Bucharest. We're all over the place. Uh, we also want to help. This, this is happening right now. We want to help 500 kids. Uh, have a Christmas that they wouldn't have unless we had a big give. Now, I've already told the team, I said, let's do it anyway. So whether you give or not, we're going to do it. <laughs> we're committed. But this is one of the, this is one of the things we're doing with our, our big give. And I could go on and on. A, a, a van, a transportation for a foster family. We're, just good things. Good things happening. So on, our, on your sheet here, um, we have a goal in the next six months through our big give to raise $2.5, $2.5 million. You say, Pastor Charlie, how are we going to do that? I'm going to leave that up to the Lord. But here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to participate. Here's my goal. Everybody that calls this their church family, 100% participation. High school, college, whoever you are online. I enjoy online services. I want you to participate. And together, come on, working together, let's do something great for God in Jesus' name. So for the next three Sundays, some of you aren't ready for this. Some of us are. We've been praying all week. Um, Here's a little pledge card you've received called the Big Give. On the back here, it says, um, what am I thanking God for? What am I praising God for? That's important. Lord, I thank you for this. And there's a place say, Lord, this is what I'm praying for. This is what I'm believing for in 2024. You can fill this out. We're going to close every service in the next three weeks with you having an opportunity to come down here and bring to the Lord your big give. And there's a little s- slit in the boxes that you can't see, but I can see. It's right here. See it right? And there's one on this side. And as we worship the Lord physically, when you're ready, this Sunday, next Sunday, Sunday after that, to get up and bring it, bring your offering to the Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for what we've already witnessed. It's not like we don't have testimony or witness to what you're doing, what's happening. Lord, that we're we're literally present and and, and participating. Lord, in in really a a revival. Lord, there's all kind of people, Lord, coming back to you. Your church is expanding. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, I pray strength. Lord, I pray for a fresh ability to hear, hear from you. Lord, that all the negative, 
Lord, all the, the, the stuff that's been clamoring in our ears and keeping us from being able to hear, Lord, the good things, Lord, that you're speaking over our lives. Lord, I pray, God, for a new, fresh ability, Lord, to hear from you. And God, I thank you, God, because of our influence. Lord, our gentle, kind influence that many people, Lord, are going to be touched and brought back to you. In Jesus' name. Come on. In Jesus' name. All of us said, Amen. Amen.